Welcome back, my dear followers. This is a new episode of The History of the American Mafia, a podcast written by Fabio Fabiano and read and translated by Grace Cutlisi. I do hope you enjoy today's new episode, which is part one of two episodes on Bugsy Siegel. Bugsy can be considered the star of the American mobsters, and by star, I mean Hollywood and the big screen. He loved cinema and all the Hollywood stars, and in turn, he was loved by cinema and its stars. He was fascinated by the celluloid world, and that same world was inspired by him in the making of tens of hundreds of films. Benjamin Siegel, the son of Jewish immigrants from present-day Ukraine, was born in Williamsburg, Brooklyn in 1906. The young Jew lived on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. He was nicknamed Bugsy from crazy as a bed bug for his sudden mood swings, a nickname he didn't like at all. He soon bonded with another legendary Jewish gangster, Mayor Lansky. The two were immediately referred to as two thugs and created their own gang, known as Bug and Maya Gang. To give you an idea of what we're talking about, at the age of 21, Siegel owned an apartment at the Waldorf Astoria. He became part of the criminal circles that boasted some of the big names like Lucky Luciano, Frank Costello and Vito Genovese. The two Jewish criminals, Siegel and Lensky, dedicated themselves to two important tasks. The years of prohibition, that of preventing the hijacking of cargoes and alcohol and beer for the Italian mafiosi, Luciano and Costello, generally accompanied by an armed escort. Later, they went on to protecting the illegal gambling activities that the two managed. Lensky was considered the brains of their activities, while Siegel the muscles, considering his proverbial attitude to violence. Bugsy Siegel is said to have been suspected of committing 12 murders, but was only tried for missing divas and simply fined. Experts on the American Mafia agree that behind the murders of Masseria and Maranzano, ordered by Lucky Luciano, were Siegel and other men loyal to the two Jewish gangsters. In 1936, Lucky Luciano sent Siegel to Los Angeles to check out the city and its outskirts. The area was controlled by the mafioso Drac Dragna. Luciano was very disappointed on how Dragna was managing the area. He considered him an old, unproductive mafioso, an opinion shared by many nascent exponents of the American Cosa Nostra. He was unable to properly exploit the rackets of prostitution and gambling in the area, nor the potential and opportunities given by the greatness of the Hollywood film studios. On the other hand, there was Siegel, the perfect character to represent Cosa Nostra in Hollywood. Elegant, refined, he certainly didn't pass unnoticed, and above all, he immediately began to obtain greater revenues from the rackets present in the area. A rivalry began between the two mobsters. Dragna was somewhat offended by Siegel bypassing him, but despite their arguments, the two bosses worked closely together, managing to set up a betting activity on the West Coast. Make money off the backs of Hollywood film studio, Siegel rigged elections to represent the state hands union. In this way, he managed to extort money from the film companies who wanted to work without headaches. In addition, on behalf of Costello, he channeled the large illicit capital, which came from gambling and extortion from the East Coast. He saved up a substantial amount for himself, which allowed him to build a villa with 35 rooms for his wife and two daughters. He put on a facade of respectability, enough to join the exclusive country clubs in the area. Siegel was recognized by Eastern mobsters as having grown up 
to be not solely a ruthless hitman, but one able to exploit the dollar mine from Southern California racketers. He laid the groundwork for a lucrative narcotics trade with Mexico and managed to enter the great circle of Hollywood stars. His entrance ticket to the golden world was his dear childhood friend, actor George Raff, who played a gangster in movies. He introduced Siegel, and soon he was welcome to all. In 1941, he was arrested for the assassination of his former partner, Big Greeny Greenberg, which had occurred two years earlier. Despite his imprisonment, Bugsy maintained a very high standard of living for a prisoner. A personal chef prepared him his meals. He enjoyed alcohol whenever he wanted, had all the female visits he desired, and had access to a phone allowing him to make all the calls he wanted. So, you may be asking, what happened to Siegel's trial? The sinister disappearance of the two witnesses settled the legal case, for all charges against him were dropped. There are many fascinating stories starring Siegel, but one of the most intriguing is without doubt, involving his relationship with the Countess Dorothy Venticia Nifrasso. While in Los Angeles, he met the Countess, the rich New York heiress, who in the 1920s had married Count Carlo Dentice di Brasso, none other than the owner of Villa Madama, now an Italian state heritage. She was known to the public because of her affair with the actor Gary Cooper when the star was in Italy and was flattered to have a gangster amongst her friends. She convinced him to embark with her and other notables on a legendary cruise in which a bizarre crew set out in search of buried treasure on Cocos Island off the coast of Costa Rica. It was said that a treasure of over $300 million worth of precious gems and gold was to be found. An adventure with a soap opera ending, including alleged shipwrecks, immunities and love triangles. The Countess Dorothy, however, would influence Siegel's future forever, for it was in fact at one of her legendary parties organized in Hollywood that Siegel met the woman who would seal his fate, Virginia Hill. Virginia had been the lover of other famous gangsters and the courier used by the Mafia to convey messages and transfer considerable sums of money of illicit origin. 